Welcome to the White Rabbit YouTube channel. In today's video, I'll be connecting some dots from all over the known world. From India, Thailand, Sri Lanka, Egypt, and even Peru. Also on the docket are reptilians, giants, aliens, ancient weapons of mass destruction, the Nephilim, stargate portals, a monkey army, and mermaids. So sit back, relax, and join me as we uncover the truth about all these extremely different topics and locations. What you're looking at behind me is the two kilometer long mural slightly edited representation of the Ramayana to fit Thai culture and elements of folklore and Buddhism in Thailand, known as the Ramakian. To start things off, I'll briefly introduce this amazing story that some believe is based on true events. It's based on a true story, actually. Rama, prince of Ayodhya, a real city in India, is married to Sika, an incarnation of the goddess Lakshmi. Rama's stepmother manipulates King Dasharatha into exiling Rama and crowning her own son Bharata. Rama willingly goes into exile for 14 years with his wife Sita and his loyal brother Lakshmana. While living in exile, Rama has an encounter in the forest with the demoness Serpanaka, a Rakshashi, who is attracted to Rama and attempts to harm Sita. Lakshama intervenes and cuts off Supranaka's nose and ears. Supanaka returns to Lanka, also known as Sri Lanka. Ravana, disguised as a golden deer, lures Rama away from their cottage. But after hearing calls of distress from Rama, Sita sent Lakshama to help. It was of course a trap and Sita was abducted by Ravana when she was left unguarded. As the story goes, while traveling through the forest thinking up plans of revenge, Rama and Lakshama came upon a troop of monkeys. In actuality, they weren't monkeys at all. Just one evolutionary step behind Homo sapiens, Homo erectus. Rama notices one of the monkeys has golden earrings and a pearl necklace and mentions it to Lakshmana. The monkey with golden earrings and a pearl necklace comes down from the treetops and introduces himself as Hanuman, the king of the monkeys, and tells Rama that his mother told him to devote himself to the man that notices his pearl necklace and golden earrings. His only request was for Rama to pet him three times from head to tail to lift the cursed placed upon him. Once the three pets were done, Hanuman's full power was restored. An alliance was formed and he became a devoted ally of Rama. Here comes one of the best parts. Rama and his army arrived at the southeastern coast of India facing Lanka 30 kilometers away. It was decided a bridge would be built across the ocean. The monkey army collected rocks and boulders from all along the coast and dumped them in the ocean, forming a solid land bridge. Ravana on Lanka preemptively made plans with his daughter, Suvanamaka, a mermaid, to destroy the bridge to Lanka. Suvanamaka had the power to control all the creatures of the sea and instructed them to remove the stones from the bridge being built. Rama's engineers noticed the lack of progress and Hanuman volunteered to investigate. He saw the creatures of the sea removing the stones and began killing the fish and sea creatures. 
until Suva Namaka showed herself and lured Hanuman to a cave where a giant crab almost got him. Instead, he made the cave collapse, trapping the giant crab, almost killing the mermaid. At the last moment, Hanuman saved the mermaid he had just tried to kill. They then, of course, fell in love, and Hanuman convinced Sumanaka to join them in building the bridge and destroying her father, Ravana. In the fierce battle, Rama aided by his divine weapons, such as the Brahmastra, comparable to a modern-day nuclear weapon. The Pashaptastra, a weapon granted by Lord Shiva. And of course, the Sharanga, a celestial bow from Vishnu wielded by Rama. With exceptional accuracy and power, similar to a modern-day sniper rifle. Rama confronts Ravana in a climatic battle, defeating him and ultimately killing him. Rama rescues Sita and returns to Ayodhya after completing 14 years of exile. Rama is crowned king of Ayodhya, where he rules with justice and righteousness, earning the love and respect of his people. Since the story has brought us to Lanka, let's continue. Lanka, now known as Sri Lanka, is an island full of enigmas. From giants to UFOs to stargate portals and more, the land bridge is known as Rama's Bridge or Ram Setu to the Indian people. But according to Islamic beliefs, it's known as Adam's Bridge. Islamic people believe that the biblical Adam fell to earth after his expulsion from the Garden of Eden onto a mountain now called Adam's Peak. Adam's Peak is most renowned for the Sri Pada, the sacred footprint. A 1.8 meter or 5 foot 11 inches footprint in the rock. According to Islamic belief, it's Adam's footprint. In Buddhist tradition, the print is said to be the footprint of Buddha. In Hindu tradition, it's that of Hanuman, the monkey god. Going back a little to the battle between Rama and Ravana for Rama to rescue his wife Sita. The main battle was fought on the monolith called Sigiriya. Ravana's capital. Inaccessible to mere humans due to it being 600 feet or 180 meters up from the surrounding plain. The rock is so steep that the top overhangs the sides. There are no ancient stairways or paths to ascend, which implies the use of the manas. Ancient Indian flying devices and other means lost to time. Personally, I think that there must be tunnels and stairways in the inner parts of the monolith. Seeing how seemingly easy it was for the ancients to manipulate even the hardest of rocks. Take the Sigiriya monolith, for example. The rock is granite rated from 6 to 8 on the Mohs hardness scale, which is very hard, and the entire top half of the monolith was cut off to make a flat top. 3,500 tons of granite removed from one of the hardest rocks in the world. That's nothing compared to the amazing qualities of this pool also known as Ravana's swimming pool. This fresh water source on the top of a mountain never goes dry and never overflows. Sigiriya, more commonly known as Lion Rock, although it shouldn't be, more on that later. A rock fortress from the 5th century with flowing fresh water. Landscaped gardens with thousands of marble stone blocks that are not native to the area. These days, 
There are metal staircases for tourists to make their way to the top. Cigarilla was rediscovered in 1831 by a Scotsman in the British Army. Major Jonathan Forbes while out on a horse ride. But it wasn't until 20 years later that the summit of the rock was finally reached by a group of mountaineers, including Harry Bell, the then archaeological commissioner of Ceylon. Most obviously, a lion has five claws on the front paws, not four as in depicted on Lion's Rock. Two gigantic paws with claws extended set on either side of a stone staircase that goes nowhere. It's one thing to say Ravana was a giant. It's another thing entirely to show you giant skulls with third eyes that would have connected to the pineal gland. There is a private collector on the island of Sri Lanka that displays these skulls on the front porch of his house. Check it out. Not only skulls, there is a variety of gigantic bones from femurs to ribs and more. According to ancient texts, Ravana was not human, but belonged to an extraterrestrial race called the Asuras, mixed with Naga ancestry. They are described as power-seeking demons with the ability to shapeshift and become invisible. In Hindu tradition, they are called titans, demigods, or anti-gods. According to Tamil and Sihala texts, the Nagas were the original inhabitants of Sri Lanka. There is a strong Naga reptilian connection in the Sigiriya complex. Unsurprisingly, there is a giant Naga idol in the form of a cobra, a statue several stories tall called Cobra Hood Cave that was worshipped by Ravana, the king of Sri Lanka. It is believed that the reptilian ancestors have gone underground but they have promised to return. Very nearby is the Stargate portal of Anuradhapura, dated to 300 BC. It has near identical shapes and symbols as portals found at Abu Ghurab in Egypt and La Puerta de Hayu Marca in Peru. According to Stargate theory, stargates are usually located near a water source, which allowed the extraterrestrials to process gold from Earth's water. The stargate of Anuradhapura, also known as Sakwala Chakraya and Ranmasu Uyana, has been dated to 6,500 years ago. It is believed that the gods traveled through Sakwala Chakraya, which means the wheel of the universe coming from different planets. Locals say the portal emits a strange energy and you are advised not to stand or sit too close to it for too long. When using an EMF meter used to measure electromagnetic fields, you can clearly see that there is a high level of energy coming from the portal. This stargate is not only for the gods, it can be used by humans as well to travel to other parts of the universe. And you'll be able to travel to another portal or another world. Buddhists visit this portal at night using oil lamps and go into a deep state of meditation in an attempt to open the stargate or to more easily astral or spirit travel. Also not too far away is Dani Gala Mountain, also known as Alien Mountain. It is an ancient giant tree cut down by giants. The base has been petrified into stone 
it also has many UFO sightings, mainly due to its proximity to the Somawathi Temple, also known as the UFO Temple, with 18 officially recognized sightings and many, many more unofficial reports, with billboards showing pictures and details of the sightings as well as the giant crystal that attracts the UFOs. It is obvious that Sri Lanka has a treasure trove of all kinds of conspiracies. That's it for today's episode. If you liked what you saw and learned and would like to see more similar content in the future, please like, share and subscribe. Uncovering the truth, one conspiracy at a time. See you next week on the White Rabbit YouTube channel.